It's been a while since I've talked about the Brahma Jala Sutta, but now feels like a good time. So, I got these new Bluetooth microphone things, and I'm going to try to make a different kind of video. I'm going to paraphrase and read from the Brahma Jala Sutta. So this is the first text of the collection of longer discourses. Brahma Jala Sutta, the Supreme Net. Thus have I heard, once the Lord was traveling along the main road between Rajagaha and Nalanda with a large company of some five hundred monks. And the wanderer, Supaya, was also traveling on that road, with his pupil, the youth, Brahmadatta. And Supaya was finding fault in all sorts of ways, with the Buddha, the Dhamma, and the Sangha, whereas his pupil, Brahmadatta, was speaking in various ways in their praise. So these two, teacher and pupil, directly opposing each other's arguments, followed close behind the Lord and his order of monks. So the Buddha is walking around with 500 friends, and shortly behind them, closely behind them, follows these two people. One is a teacher, the other is a student. The teacher is trying to tell the student how horrible the Buddha, Dhamma, and Sangha is, and the student is arguing. And then they all stopped for the night, and those two following behind the Buddha, they stopped there too, and continued to argue. The Buddha knew what was happening, and so he met them at a place called the Round Pavilion. He went to go talk to the monks, because they had been talking about these two people following behind. So now the Buddha, after the night, goes to address the monks. So the Buddha met up with the monks and he asked them what had happened, what they've been talking about so excitedly, and they, they tell him what happened about the two people following behind arguing, praising and blaming the Buddha, the Buddhist teaching and the Buddhist community. The Buddha basically says, if anyone talks trash about me, don't get angry. Because if you get angry when people talk trash, will you be able to recognize the truth of what they're saying? And the monks answer, no way. We won't be able to think clearly overwhelmed by our anger. You don't need to get angry, but you can just respond saying, this is true, that is not true, to the best of your ability, and you'll be more capable of doing that if you are not angry, because anger will make you stupid. And then he says something pretty awesome. He says, The same goes for if people are giving excessive praise. You don't become overexcited. You don't get all worked up thinking, Ooh, we're so cool. In the same way, your mind will be obscured. You won't be able to answer, this is true, this is not true. You'll be inhibited in this way 
whether you get angry or puffed up. And then after telling the monks what to do when people talk trash, saying, don't get angry. And after telling the monks what to do when people offer excessive, uh, groundless praise, says in both cases, remain calm, chill, As our minds are calm, we're able to respond effectively to accusations or unfounded praise with discernment. We'll be able to say, this is true, this is not true. People praise him for all these reasons, but in the way they praise him, they show that they don't understand what is truly valuable. When describing that truly v valuable thing, he starts talking about some wild stuff. It's the heart of the Buddha gang teaching and practice. He says there is something subtle beyond the sphere of reasoning to be experienced by the wise. And this reminds me too of his response to Baka the Brahma. I forget the name of the text, but it's in the Majjhima Nikaya. Baka the Brahma is basically like the Lord of the universe. He knows being in this realm, he knows the totality. And this kind of idea aligns with many people's you know, modern notions about what God is. So Buddha is talking to this God and the Buddha's like, I know the beyond. I know what's beyond your, gra your grasp. I know where you come from You've just forgotten, fallen under the, del the delusion that you're permanent and all-knowing. So Mara is involved in this conversation. Mara is trying to convince Baka that these wrong views are right. So. The Buddha points beyond, beyond the, beyond the totality that, B that Baka is the Lord of. And the Buddha says, well, Baka like, asserts that there is nothing. Beyond that, there is only like vacuity, non-being, voidness. It's a nihilism beyond eternalism. It's where the extremes meet. This eternalistic God saying, what is beyond me is destruction, absence of being. So this conversation, there are both extremes included in the Buddha says something that's most wicked in describing what is beyond being and non-being or the totality pleroma in Greek the Buddha says there is consciousness non-manifesting boundless luminous all around so boundless infinite space, luminous, infinite light, consciousness, mind, like what, what aspect of consciousness does this signify? It's hard to say right now, I haven't looked that deeply, but to me I know what this means, it's one mind, 
non-manifesting. This one mind is stilled like the ocean with no waves, perfectly reflective, all the moon and the stars. It's perfect tranquility and insight or gnosis, wisdom. So this reminds me of what the Buddha ultimately praises in the Brahma Jala Sutta after listing all these improper ways to praise the Buddha, the Buddha points to the truly proper thing to praise, which is this wild gnosis beyond dualistic discrimination. So what are these things that the Buddha is improperly praised for? They come in different sections. There's the short section, the middle section, and the large section. And then the Brahmajala gets into uh, the 62 wrong deeds at the heart of all dogma. So first people praise the Buddha saying, Abandoning the taking of life, the ascetic Gautama dwells refraining from taking life without stick or sword scrupulous, compassionate, trembling for the welfare of all living beings. Thus the worldling would praise the Tathagata, abandoning the taking of what is not given. The ascetic Gautama dwells refraining from what is not given, living purely, accepting what is given, awaiting what is given, without stealing abandoning sexual misconduct or in this case unchastity the ascetic Gautama lives far from it aloof from the village practice of sex and so here this is how a worldling would praise the Buddha of course the Buddha would not harm steal lie commit sexual misconduct, all these things and more, the list goes on and on. But this is only the outward expression of an internal self-realization, the perfection of wisdom and love. Wisdom sees through notions, wisdom sees beyond beings. But love keeps the Bodhisattva engaged. Keeps pulling together this wisdom and this love, this wisdom that dismantles everything. And this love, it holds it all together. And this wild multiversal dance with all these archetypal energies coursing through the various multiverses, making appearances, in our thought forms. Things are weird. The Brahma Jala Sutta is a straightforward sutta, but it gets into some even more wild stuff. So far we've heard about like right conduct, how to deal with people who talk trash, how to heal, deal with people who give excessive praise. And then we heard about these ways of praising the Buddha. We can praise the Buddha for this superficial, you know, external conduct, which is important in daily life. If we can't go around killing people and stealing and lying, it's, it's not good vibes. So, of course, the Buddha doesn't do these things. But, on the other hand, this is not the real reason to praise a Buddha.